Greetings everyone, I'm Yosho and recently I've been finding a few ways to improve myself. I've been eating a lot healthier, I've been exercising daily, and I got an N64 Rumble Pack inserted in my head so every time I want to talk about accessories it rumbles. And it looks like that's right now. Now I'd like to think that I wouldn't have to give an introduction to the Nintendo 64, but for all the 1% of people who don't know what it is, it's one of Nintendo's best consoles, in my opinion anyway. Released in 1995, the N64 was set in stone to have the idea of 3D platformers. Games like Super Mario Odyssey and The Hat in Time probably wouldn't exist without this thing. But with every system comes its accessories. Little gadgets that are supposed to increase the experience of a console, but do they always do that? <laughs> no, don't make me laugh. Do you know how many times I've looked at my N64 microphone and said, That has made my life a lot better. Now, the N64 doesn't have a bunch of accessories, but it has a fair share. And also a fair warning, I do not own like any of these accessories, cause you know, as great as Flight Force Pro 64 is, I'm not really itching to own one. Well, let's kick things off with first party accessories. Now if you've owned an N64, then you probably also own the Transfer Pack, Expansion Pack, and Controller Pack. The controller pack was essentially the console's memory card. Yeah, say you were itching to show off an awesome picture you took in Pokemon Snap, you put that right into the memory card, you take it to your friend 64, and damn, there it is. Damn, and all its glory. Damn. That's a good picture. Now the expansion pack was basically extra storage space for your N64. You see, some games were too much for the N64 to handle, so what did Nintendo do? They said, fuck it, here's 4 megabytes, work with it. And work with it they did. The expansion pack was only needed for 3 games, Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, Donkey Kong 64, and Perfect Dark. With the expansion pack, it was noticeable that the games were much more polished and clean. So could the games have worked without the pack? Yeah, but would it have been as good? Definitely not. Combine that with the fact that these three games came bundled with an expansion pack for no extra charge, and you've got a winner. Of course, now if you want one, you'll be paying a solid 50 bucks, but, you know, you could play Perfect Dark without the expansion pack and be a complete reject, or you could play with the expansion pack and actually make it somewhere in life. Your choice. Next up is the transfer pack. Now this accessory made it so you could transfer cute little gifts between systems, Game Boy and N64, it was, it was a nice thing. The most notable thing the transfer pack was used for was Pokemon Stadium and Pokemon Stadium 2. The big gimmick behind these games was being able to transfer your Pokemon teams from Pokemon Red, Blue, Yellow, Silver, Gold, and Crystal. Pokemon Stadium even included a mode called GBA Tower, which allowed you to play red, blue, and yellow on your N64 via a built-in emulator. So while Pokemon Stadium and Stadium 2 are easily enjoyed without the transfer pack, it for sure increases the experience. And let me ask you a question, have you ever wanted to play super duper sumos on the widescreen? You probably haven't, but you can! Thanks to the Wide Boy 64, the Wide Boy 64 was basically the N64's version of the Super Game Boy, and SNES add-ons allowed you to play Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. The Wide Boy 64 functions the same, except now you can play GBA games as well. Oddly enough though, this accessory was never released to the public, it was only available to developers and the gaming press. It was also used for a children's game show, Video and Arcade Top 10, so contestants would be able to play Game Boy games. It's a shame this one was never released to the public, the Super Game Boy was very well received and I'm sure people would have loved the Wide Boy as well. The final first party accessory I'll be looking at is the N64 Voice Recognition Unit. This thing was only available with two games, Dinka to Go 64 and Hey You Pikachu. 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 Now, you might be thinking that I left out quite a big first party accessory. You are so annoying. Now let's move on to the licensed third party accessories. Basically, they were endorsed by Nintendo, but not made by Nintendo, so there's like a 50 50 chance that they might be shit. First up is Sudicon 64. This is a fishing rod. Only released in Japan, this bad boy is compatible with a total of four, count them, four games, all of them fishing games, except for one. Castlevania 64 used the rod like a whip, I'm just kidding, I lied, you can't do that, I'm gonna fucking cry. Next up is the camera. Not camera 64 or anything like that, just camera. 
Yeah, I bet he thinks his shit doesn't stink. The camera, as you might have guessed, is a camera. The camera comes up with a timer and flash for taking pictures. Oddly enough though, this didn't hook up to the console at all. It was a real camera that you could take with you anywhere. It had an N64 logo on it and it came in different colors such as blue and orange. Gosh, that would be such a big flex. Everyone's on vacation with their normal boring cameras and you pull out your N64 camera to start snapping pictures. Oh hell yeah, I love that quality. And now, welcome to the third party accessories not endorsed by Nintendo. That 50-50 just went to a 0-100, if that's correct. Basically, I'm saying everything is shit. And if we're talking about this type of stuff, we should probably open it up with... Game Shark. Now, I'm sure Game Shark does not need an introduction, but in case it does, it's a cheating device. Pop it in and BAM! Hundreds of cheats for tons of games at your disposables. Having trouble getting the star in Mario 64? Pop in the Game Shark and BAM! It's all yours. You have 120 now. Oh, you can't beat that boss in Majora's Mask? No worries, here's infinite health. Now while Game Shark is a fun distraction, I think that it should really be viewed as if you're using it to actually beat the game, then you aren't appreciating all the hard work and dedication that the developers put into the game. Using Game Shark to beat a game is like trying to compare Mario Kart Wii to Mario Kart Double Dash. <laughs> you shouldn't even try. Next is the High Res Pack. This accessory is basically a cheaper equivalent to the regular expansion pack. This add-on was developed by M -m -m Mario. Swing your arms from side. Mad Cats. I'm sure everyone knows what Mad Cats is, but if you don't, if you've never owned a Mad Cats item in your life, they are essentially the most popular third-party makers. They make a bunch of stuff, cheap that stuff that just dies in no time. I used to own a Mad Cats controller that just stuck all the time. It was sticky, and did I mention that it was sticky? It's weird how we all don't like Mad Cats, but growing up, we probably all owned a Mad Cats accessory at some point. Whether it was a memory card, a controller, you, you probably owned something. But back on topic, the high res pack, as I mentioned, it was a cheaper solution to the expansion pack. Now, on the surface, this sounds like a good idea until you realize that one, every game that needs the expansion pack comes with an expansion pack, so I haven't bothered making a copy of it when it is bundled for free with the game that's required to use. Second of all, the high res pack was known to overheat quite frequently and could cause damage to your console. Hmm, that'd be quite the sight to withhold. You're just chilling on your couch, all of a sudden your system and TV just fucking catch on fire. Wow, these graphics are amazing. While we're on the topic of Mad Cats, let's talk about a few other things I made for the N64. The Mad Cat steering wheel was a lot more than just a steering wheel though. Now I'll give it to them on this one, they did put a lot of effort into this, but why? This accessory came with an analog steering wheel, two foot pedals, and a stick shift. I appreciate the effort, but most people who play racing games were satisfied with just the controller. Plus, this thing wasn't even really compatible with the more popular racing games like Mario Kart 64, Diddy Kong Racing, and Wave Racer. Next is the Mad Cat's Advanced Controller. Now, I wouldn't call this thing advanced. If the PS2 controller was sticky, I can only imagine what this was like. The big thing that made this controller advanced was the added turbo button. Now, I don't know if Mad Cat says some kind of weird kink or turn on for a turbo button, but all I'm saying is they put one on every single controller they make. Seems like the turbo button makes them go turbo as well. Now to stray away from the Mad Cats, we have the V3 racing wheel. This was another steering wheel with foot pedals. It includes an expansion port, which does not support the rumble back because there was a risk that it could grate on the player's crotch. It just keeps getting worse. First, your N64 lights on fire. Next, your crotch gets demolished by a steering wheel. What's next? It's gonna make me have a heart attack? You've gotta be fucking kidding me. The N64 Biosensor. I cannot believe this is real. The Biosensor is an ear clip with a cord that plugs into one of the N64 controller slots that measures the player's heart rate. It was only released in Japan and is available with one game. I'm sure you're wondering which game. You would probably think it's something like, oh, Resident Evil. You know, something scary. Tetris, it's Tetris. That's right, you can only use Biosensor for Tetris 64, so this goes out to all the homies who have had a heart attack while enjoying a nice game of Tetris.